What is this? I'm starting our vlog for Origins. No, what is that? What? Oh, this, yeah. I hired a vlogger, uh, Randy. It's Rodney. Shh, let's not talk. I hired Randy to vlog me vlogging our Origins vlog. All right. Yeah, okay, okay. So Randy, hit it. Marty, you, you start. Let's do the intro. Jazz, what'd you Ra think of? Randy, you're way too close, okay? I want an, a cinematic panoramic establishing shot. Okay. Uh, no, by, I mean higher by that, I mean... Sure. Higher. Really? Perfect. Okay, sorry. Let's go. This is our 2018's origin vlog. You start. Jazz, what you... Randy! No, that's not working at all for Wait. me because I want hip also, okay? Give me, give me MTV. Moving around? Yeah, that's hip. That's cool. Is it? Yeah, I like it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you start. Let's go. This is our 2018 origins vlog coming at you right now. Start! Chaz, Randy! Randy! No! You're giving me VH1. I want MTV! Hip! I got an idea. I got an idea. It's not working. Come on this side. Come on this side. Come on this side. Come on this side. I got a better idea. Give me from this side. This angle. Because that way, Marty won't be in the shop. Okay. You start. This is our Origins 2018 vlog! Chaz! Randy! Randy. No! I want you to make me hip! Hip! Make me, you know, like taller, tanner, and in a like a different set of clothes. Something cool. Something like what Marty would wear, but better. Hey, that makes no sense. It doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. It's, it's just in my mind. I just, you do it. I'm not going to do it because I quit. You, you can't, what do you mean you quit? This is ridiculous and I'm done. You, you can't quit. I just did. And it's Rodney. F fine. You, you go on and quit. You're never going to make it in YouTube video anyway. I'm going to miss Randy. And that's my idea for this year's Origins vlog intro. So, what do you guys think? I, I'm confused. I don't, I don't understand why you're calling me Randy. It's the gag, you know, I don't, I don't really know who you are, so I call you Randy. But you do know who I am. It's, you get it, it's a joke. It's like it, it's like it takes place in the past before I knew you. Oh, before you knew me? Yeah, okay, that so... Actually, okay, well then that, that could work, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah all right. okay. Yeah. But how would you know me? Oh, that's right, how, how come you don't know me but know Marty? Yeah, we, we met about the same time. That's right, that doesn't, yeah. so it doesn't work. And if it was in the past, wouldn't, shouldn't we be wearing like different clothes to establish that shot? Oh, I dressed shot? differently. Yeah. I didn't even have these glasses back then. Yeah, I didn't own this shirt back then. He definitely didn't own that shirt. Yes, those are completely valid concerns that you both have. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. I got an idea. How about you guys just don't overthink it and just do what I tell you to do in the video? Or I got a better idea. Oh, good. Took care of that. Nice one. <clears throat> nice one. Well, you want to talk about Origins? Yeah, let's do that. Well, I, I think the, the main place to start for a lot of things is like, what was hot? What was the big game? And I think that's one of the big takeaways from this show is that there wasn't a lot of hot. That's true. Uh, there were what, maybe four or five big releases that people were just like, I've yeah. got to get that. So it wasn't nearly like maybe say a, a Gen Con or maybe even Origins in the past. Yeah, there was really like maybe a, just a few titles, like about a handful that people were really running for to go grab. I think one of them, I think the Plan B booth. <laughs> Most popular booth of the show, by far. Games, yeah. They had uh, they had Century Eastern Wonders there. Yes. And this is a continuation off of the original Century. Mm -hmm. And I was expecting it just to be like more cards, more of the same. Right. And it's not. It's got a bunch of tiles. There's ships. You're sailing around on these different islands and things. Mm -hmm. And you can also combine it with the original game. Yes, and I talked to Emerson for a little bit about this game. So I said, well, I heard this was a trilogy, so what's the third one going to mm. be about? Well, he couldn't tell me too much, but it was like it was going to be a little bit more in depth. So there's like three levels of complexity, which I think is a great idea of maybe somebody who's just now getting into gaming. You can start oh, with this one up. game. It's the same theme, just in the game with a little bit more to it. This one now has tiles, okay. and the next one has whatever's going to come in the next one. Well, I noticed here someone scrawled all over your cover. That's, that would have been the designer, yeah. Emerson oh. Matsu Ishii, <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I get a game from Emerson. I love him to sign the box. <laughs> well, what about you? Did you have any other uh, titles to cut your eye? So there was another one uh, yes. from Plan B that everybody was scrambling for that right. actually also sold out, and that is... Uh, Coimbra? Coimbra? Oh, right. yeah, I'm yeah. not sure how to pronounce the I, name. This is a medium weight style game that a lot of people who have played it said they really, really liked it. And I was just blown away by some of the art 
on the uh, the uh, components and the box and everything. And uh, so everybody who said they played it liked it, so said, okay, I got to get a copy. That's what grabbed me. And I think you know, Plan B having so many strong titles, mm -hmm. seeing something that's you know again another beautiful game. I think that's why people are probably grabbing it, even with minimal information about it. Yeah. So this and uh, Century. Century sold out quickly within the first day or maybe the second day. Wow. Guys, guys, guys. Do you want to know what the hot new thing at Origins is that I found? Well, in past years, the crosswalk between the Origins Convention Center and the North Market hasn't had any crossing lights, requiring pedestrians to race across the street at their own peril. But this year, all new crosswalk signals were available, making crossing the street a luxurious experience that everyone could get excited about. That's good, Chess. Well, let's talk about some other games. Sounds great. Well, another one that was on my mind was Cathargo. This mm. is from Capstone Games. And normally they do, I would say, sometimes more complex, heavier games. Although they do have their other line, Simply Complex, for the yes. latest stuff. This is kind of, I would say this one's kind of in between okay. a little bit. It's, it's set in the, the age of Carthage, and you're trying to ship goods, go on expeditions, and it uses multi-purpose cards. See, I'm a big fan of multi-purpose cards. Are. Because I love the idea of cards with, uh, that has, uh, do multiple things with it. It's like, right. the, it's, uh, Bruges is a good example. Uh, from That's Stefan right. Fell, right. where there's yeah. a card that can be used multiple different ways. So I'm a big fan of yeah, those types of games. That. But we, you know, along with these kind of games, we also have seen the advent of another style of game that's getting a lot of popularity. Yes, roll and rights. Roll and rights. Or I like to call them right and rolls. Oh, do you? I don't know why, because it's like <laughs> rock and roll. That's okay. It's like right, right and roll. Right and roll. Like, right. Rrr, but anyway, this is from Deep Water Games. It's called Welcome to Your Perfect Home. But I see a lot of people Everyone just calling it, it Welcome, Welcome to. to. But it has a fuller name. I don't know why they cut it off. I don't know. And it confused me because the other night we played Welcome to Centerville, Centerville. from GMT <laughs> yes. Games, which was a really good game, yeah, by the way. way. The comparison to Welcome to Centerville is actually kind of interesting because that's about building like a larger city. Or, mm -hmm. And this is more about building like a neighborhood in the 50s or 60s oh, okay. type of thing. And the other thing that's kind of interesting about this game is on the back, it says from 1 to 100 players because there's 100 sheets in here. <laughs> so technically, oh, okay. you could play with a large group or a smaller group over and over again. Now, I think I'll go with less than 100. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. Personally, fair personally enough. myself. Guys, 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 you know another interesting thing about Welcome to is that it's not actually a roll and write. It's a card and write because it doesn't actually use dice. It uses cards. You know what? You know what? You know what else uses dice? The dice tower, because that's where I was all week this week, and I have lots of interesting little things that happened to me while I was hanging out with the dice tower all week. At Origins, I was the keeper of the dice tower interview schedule, directing the 59 interviews that we recorded with board game publishers and designers. Now, it's a little known fact that one of the most overlooked duties in interview preparedness is the lint brush manager, who has the awesome responsibility of making sure that the interview table remains free of cardboard crumbs and other debris that can accumulate between recordings. Fortunately, between our well-groomed table surface and my ability to flip pages on a clipboard, the week's interviews went off without a hitch. In fact, I even had some time to explore the exhibit hall, along with Dice Tower's tech supervisor, Derek, where we searched for a couple of the hottest games at the convention. So it looks like they're sold out of Eastern Wonders. That is right. That, I think that went actually on the very first day. Ah, hey, it looks like they're at a reef, too. Yeah, already. I was hoping to grab that. Yeah. I guess they should have called it Brief. <laughs> <laughs> And then, each night, I retire to my hotel room for some well-deserved rest. Now, my roommate, Eric Summerer, who co-hosts the Dice Tower podcast and performs audiobooks, even surprised me with a special audiobook that he recorded just for me. Chapter 14. Next time, you will find another roommate. Someone. Anyone other than Eric Summerer. Remember, someone else. Okay. You know, the thing, though, it's not just about buying all the new games, right? It's also right. about playing the games, too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that that goes on at Origins. Oh, yes, and there's a lot of demo tables set up at Origins. Right. It's really interesting that you have the main vendor hall, and on each side of that, 
How do you like those hand motions? <laughs> very good uh, uh, of the hall. <laughs> there are these big demo areas set up by each of the publishers, Stronghold, Simon, etc. And those were buzzing. Got to check out a new card game that we were very interested in. We did in. that was towards the beginning of Origins. That's right. We played, um, it was the Age of Sigmar Champions game that's coming out. This takes place in the Games Workshop World of Age of Sigmar. And it's uh, one of these collectible card games. And yeah. man, I was so close to beating you. And then you came back and you destroyed me. It was it was really fun. It, it, it was time. really cool. It was one of those things. Oh, collectible card game. Oh, I'm just gonna see how this plays. And at the end, it's like I, I want to play this You're like, more. I, I like this more than I'd hoped to. <laughs> but but I think one of the appeals is is that just like Light Seekers, is there's an app that's going to go along with it. That's so the right. idea is it's kind of like a Hearthstone. You can play online, but with the physical cards, you scan them in. And then you can play with a friend online. Yeah, your entire collection you can bring into the portable game. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. And it was really cool to see all these different types of games. You and I went and looked at the war gaming area. That's right. With all these people playing these massive scale miniature games on the table. And so I was just blown away. Miniatures. Like there was all kinds of games stuff. They had this one big large aerial map, and they had like ten people, each of them flying their own airships with telescoping metal poles that like, go to different heights and stuff. It was it was really cool. It was really cool. Those yeah. Are, those are the kind of unique experiences you can get at a convention, I think. Right. Guys, guys, you, you know another unique experience you can have at Origin? <coughs> uh, if you stand in the hallway of one of the hotels too long, security comes by and asks you to leave. Oh, hey, hey Chaz, Chaz, wait! You forgot your bag. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching our 2018 vlog from Origins. I'm really glad that you've taken the time to share it with us. And this isn't even my bag. Hey, for more board game news, reviews, and commentary, be sure to subscribe, like this video, and add a comment and let us know how your Origins 2018 went. In the meantime, I want to thank Marty Cannell from Rolling Dice and Taking Names, and Randy Smith from Watch It Play for joining me in this video and making it happen. Thanks for watching and thanks for them for helping. Until next time, take care. I'll see you again soon. It's Rodney. <laughs> <laughs>